So good evening, everyone. Uh, so today we start off with the first session uh, of critical thinking using children's literature through children's literature. Okay, so I'm I'm basically a reading host and I conduct a lot of reading programs in schools and for teachers uh, how they can do it in schools as well and also for children. I have a reading club where uh, children come and we discuss a lot of books and we also write a lot together. So. Uh, you all have read poems, you know fairly what a poem is. Can you put it, can you put quickly in the chat box what do you know about po poems and poetry? Quickly in the chat box. What do you know about poetry? Have you read, do you have a favorite poet? Do you like, a? Uh, do you have a favorite poem? All that you can uh, put in the chat box quickly. What is poetry? What do you think is poetry? I'm not going to give you any technical definitions, okay? Like, oh, this is what is poetry. I'm not going to give you any definitions. You have everything at the tips of your finger, uh, at, you know, at your fingertips. You can Google it. You can find out. But I, I'm not going to tell you this is the definition. This is how you're going to do poetry. Nothing. We're going to explore poetry in a different way. But what do you know about poetry? What is it that you like about poetry? Every Who is your favorite poet? And what is your favorite poem? Okay, Mariam, poems are small. Thank you. Simple verses to understand everything around us. Yes, Navjeet, uh, very, uh, very good observation. Yes, poems, most poems have rhyming words. You must be knowing of the rhyming scheme. If you're in a regular school, they, they, they will tell you rhyme scheme, A, B, A, B. The last words have similar sounds, A, B, A, B, or ABBA, A, B, B, A, or then you have A, A, B, B, so many rhyming schemes, yes. Yes, there will be many lines where writers express their feelings. So is it like a story? Story also has many lines. In a story also a writer is expressing their feelings. Uh, yeah, it's a small form of, yes, something that you express, yes, in a very small form, yes. So yes, there are many types of poems, yes, Ishan. For example, yes, haiku. There's another uh, form of poetry even in uh, Jap Japan called tanka. Uh, both haiku and tanka, they use syllables, but we will not do that right now. Uh, you can explore it on your own, yes. It's used to express thoughts, yes. Poetry, that's the power of poems, you know. You just have to express in very little words and the message is conveyed. A critical thinking through uh, children's literature and we start with exploring poetry and how we can uh, you know think of yes so what is poetry was my question to you for which you've already given me answers what does reading a poem make you feel can you put that in the chat box or if you want to uh, just speak to me, you can do that as well. What does, uh, what does reading a poem make you feel? Okay, so let's uh, read this poem to see what it makes us feel. So first, I hope you're able to see the full poem there. Yes, so does the poem look familiar have you read has anyone read this poem before not yet okay so if you haven't read read this poem in your mind and after some time when i give you a cue one of you can read it aloud all right so the poem is called the last bee and it's a very interesting poem Okay, anyone wants to read aloud? Uh, Mariam, yes, please go ahead. After the last E has asked his last as, the urge and the butterflies did what they could. At soon the fields lay are, few flowers were left. Nature was broken and the plant, planet erupt. Rian Ilston. 
Yes. What did you notice? The letter B was missing. The letter B was missing. And what do you think the poet is wanting us to understand? If the letter uh, B is missing, he has purposely written the poem without the E. What does he want us to? Uh, what is he? What is he trying to tell us? You can read the poem again quietly, silently, and tell me what uh, he's trying to tell us all. What is the message that he's conveying through the poem? That uh, the world was not complete without bees. Okay, so is the what is important? The letter B or the bees? Um. Yeah, Mega, it sounds like what a small kid would say when they're learning how to pronounce letters. Yes, that's one very important. That's a very nice observation, Mega. Bees are important. Yes, Rish Rishikesh, correct. I won't say correct. I'm, you know, uh, yes, bees are important. So all that you are saying right here is important. Yeah, bees are important. Why do you think bees are important? Because that they are, uh, they pollinate the flowers and mm. they produce the most amount of fruits and vegetables All right so this is that is why uh, we say grow lots of flowers so that there are bees around and so we can make food and they can the bees also can make food now why do you uh, now do you think when the poet punched that letter b did it create an impact in you we uh, noticed it. Um, you noticed it. Yeah. And we Why thought. We... Yeah. So what it... will happen if the real bees are not there? Real. Oh my goodness. Uh, the world is completely in a disaster. Where people will go hungry. People will go uh, uh, really bad. Right. So people will die without food. Correct. Okay. So that. So a lot of things happens uh, without the bees, uh, right? So uh, anyone else has to add on anything with the last B? So the letter B is important. And through the letter, by punching the letter B, the poet has made us understand that bees, the insects, the bees are very important for us, right? So that's a wonderful poem. And you can follow Brian Bilston's poems. His name is also, did you notice even from his name, B is removed. Brian Elston. Brian, we had Elston. Brian Elston. Yes. Even his name, see it, how important it is, no? A letter. I mean, because we are, we are all using languages and we are using letters to represent our names. See how important a letter becomes. Isn't First, it? I thought that you had an error in <laughs> printing the... <laughs> exactly. Poem. You know what? Last year when I read Brian Wilson's, I follow his poems and I like it because they are, uh, they are extraordinary poems, you know, they, they don't follow any rules. And that is what we're going to do also today. We're not going to follow any rules. We're going to write just for the joy of writing and just for the a joy of exploring poetry. So we are not going to follow any rules. That's why I put that poem also. And, and that's, that's a brilliant way to convey a message, isn't it? To say that, you this know. It must be really clever. Yeah, he, and his poems are ex extraordinary, brilliant poetry he writes. Please follow his poems. They're very nice, huh? Okay. His name Let's, is Brian Ilston. Brian Bilston. Brian Bilston. Bilston, yes, the B, he removed the Bs from his names also, <laughs> Brian Bilston. Okay, let's look at these two poems. Uh, has anyone come across poems like this? Has anyone read poems like this? Okay, I can just read the river poem. Okay, the river. From a tiny spring she, oh, sorry, from a tiny spring, the river came and wound its way for days and days, first east, then west, but always south, always down, even when it curled, 
itself around a bend, but then one day something changed. A river and a river, it could no longer be for the river grew and the river knew that now it was the sea, 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 the sea. Yes. What did you notice? What did you notice in this point? The way they have written the letters, like the shape. Yes, it's a river. Okay, so that gives you a clue what kind of poetry this can be. So look at the way the words are written. Do you do you think poems are written this way, can be written this way? Have you seen poems written like this? Yeah, so Mega says yes. So what kind of a poem is this, uh, Mega? Is it like a shape poem? Yeah, it's called a, sh it's called a shape poem. Uh, there is another kind of po a poem called the concrete poem. Yeah, there is a shape and concrete poem. So in a concrete poem, you if you're writing about the tree, you will shape the letters or you would write the words in the shape of a tree. Okay. And okay, this is a very interesting one. Anyone can read 10 ways to travel. Hop, 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 hop. Yeah, so you do you hop? Yes. Who can read the second line? Atmika, can you read the second line? Bounce, bounce, bounce. Very good. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Atmika, can you read the third line, please? Tiptoe. Sorry. Tiptoe. Correct. You're right. Tiptoe. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Tiptoe. Tiptoe, tiptoe. Okay. Rishikesh, can you read this? Roll over, roll over, roll over and over. See that? So the words are also rolling over. Roll over, roll over, roll over, over and over. Yes. Okay, who can read this one? Mega, would you want to try? Wriggle, 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 wriggle. Yeah. Wriggle? Wriggle, 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 yeah? So with your, your voice also changes when you're reading it. Get the point? So when you're reading, your voice is also changing according to the way the words are written. Okay. Uh, Ishan, would you want to read this? Ma'am, is it stroll? Uh, yes, it is stroll. Stroll, stroll. So run, 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 leave. So the way the words are written, there is a beauty to reading poetry also, right? So you do, just don't read in monotone. You don't read in monotone in the same voice. So that is why these kind of poems, shape poetry, gives you that kind of a feel towards how you read poems. Okay, anyone can read this? Somebody take... Uh, Navjeet, can you read what this word could be? They're simple poems, but look at the way the poet has used and played around with words. Cartwheel. Correct. What is a cartwheel? Yeah, I don't know how to show it, but you do a cartwheel, isn't it? With your hands and you go like this, you like, uh, yeah, right. Cartwheel, 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 cartwheel. Yes. Okay, then what is the next thing? Dance, 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 dance. Okay, so it just I mean, uh, my expressions would be different from your expression. So you try with poetry how you can read. Even when you're reading your own poems, just see with voice modulation what magic your words can, uh, you know, create. Okay, then what is it? Spring, so you can give that, uh, you know, that nasal tone to your spring, spring, you know what a spring is, no? It just keeps bouncing. Spring, spring, flop. Okay, now, what did you notice in these two points? What you already said, there is... The shape. last line, you haven't read the last line yet. Flop. 
flop. Yes. And it is written by Penny Kent. And this river is written by James Carter. Okay, he's also a poet that you can follow. He's written, uh, he's written brilliant poems for children. Uh, you can you can follow his work. It's 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 very nice to explore poetry. Okay. So what did you like about these poems? We read three poems. What did you like about these poems? You can uh, put it in the chat box. Uh, okay, you, you say it is creative, yes. Attractive, okay. Interesting, yes. You want to look at the poem, what is it written like this? Why are words written like this? Yeah, some kind of a... Uh, Yes, you can try and write poems like this. If you're thinking about any any kind of uh, outstanding. Okay, Rishikesh. Anyone else thinks differently? Do you think it is difficult? It was difficult for you to read? Maybe if you read it in a book, it becomes very uh, easily readable. But I'm sharing it from a textbook. This was from my daughter's first standard textbook. And this is the first time I was seeing shape poetry. And then I found out, I researched, I found out, and, you know, I began to like poems after that. That, you know, poems can be written differently. They don't have to have rhymes. They don't have to follow certain rules of poetry that we usually tend to, you know, uh, yes. Normally poems are just, yes, a long, uh, 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 in poems, uh, do you call them a par paragraph or a stanza? Stanza, sorry. Stanza, right. So in this, in stories, when they go into pages, it becomes paragraphs. In poems, we call stanzas. They're like crisp, short stanzas, but they give, send you, uh, send the meaning out to you, right? And uh, yes, this kind of poetry makes reading a little more fun. You know, it's not the usual run of the mill kind of a poem that you're reading. You're reading thoda hatke kind of a poem. Okay, are we good to go? So far, it's okay. All of you are comfortable. Uh, if you want to have, uh, please keep a bottle of water with you so that, you know, you're comfortable. Right, I'll just close it. Okay, so we kind of discussed from your uh, words and the chat, what is poetry? It conveys a thought, it describes a scene, right? In all these three poems, you, you told me because the bees are not there, something will happen and the river flowing and how people, uh, you know, how you can travel by using a lot of actions. Then poems can be lyrical. They have a rhyme scheme. Yeah. Uh, you must have known that you must know, you will be knowing the rhyme scheme, isn't it? Uh, rhyming words, like when, when we teach small children, we say rhyming words. Then as you grow older, you get to uh, get the hang of rhyme scheme, A, B, A, B or ABBA, A, B, B, A, you know, that kind of a rhyme scheme, or it will be A, A, B, B rhyme scheme. Find out if you have forgotten, or maybe you can revisit the poems that you've already done, uh, uh, and you can, uh, you know, you can find out about the rhyme scheme. Have you, uh, have you noticed this in any other language in Malayalam or Hindi, this kind of rhyme scheme? Malayalatila, Alangila, Hindi, or any language, French. Have you come across this? I rhyme haven't scheme? read Malayalam or Hindi poems. You have not read. What about you, Manomi? Manomi, why should you read Malayalatila, Hindi, Alangi? Even in language. Malayalam, why should you read rhyme scheme under Malayalatila? Rhyming words, I turned off. Oro line, Kajimbidan, rhyming words, I turned off. That's the question. Why should you get up? Okay, at the Russian next time, Hindi, when if you're taking up a Hindi poem or a Malayalam poem or any language uh, of your comfort uh, or any language that you know, just see if there is rhyme scheme there. And do you agree there is rhythm? There is rhythm in poem. When you read, or a rhythm, right? You yes, read it yes. With, yes, you read it with a rhythm. Then poems have a stanza. What do you mean by imagery? What do you mean by imagery? If it's, it's a distinctive image, if it's a, if it's a description yeah, poem. It, yeah, so it is a descriptive poem. You are, because of the descriptive language, you're able to visualize what the poet is saying. So when you when you read the last B poem, did you visualize a B or a B in a kanda? 
the last b ore oru b ne kanda the last b adhe ullu ipo b right so it kind of created an imagery in a figurative and descriptive language simile we use metaphors we use alliterations in all the conventional poems and even the poems that we are going to do we use all this okay so after your responses i got i know that what a poem makes you feel poem makes you did you did you kind of understand that it makes it plays with the reader senses you know it try to uh, get you to imagine the river the river is starting very small from the hill and then it is growing and growing it is bending and it is moving around and then it reaches the sea it says first it goes south or sorry east then it goes west and then it goes only south south and then it goes down by the bend and then finally it reaches the sea so did you did it play with your senses did it play with your sense of sight sense of smell it could be the last b you know when you have read last b you would have felt oh, i can smell the flowers or i can smell uh, you know the trees in full blue i can see the bees going around in the uh, towards the flowers yeah so it plays around with your senses your sights your taste smells and sounds does it also make you emotional internal emotional external emotions internal emotions and external emotions does a poem make you feel happy or sad yes so as an external emotion what did you feel when you uh, read about uh, the bee you were worried about the environment isn't it yeah so mariam said if the bees are gone it will be we'll face a, you know we'll have a, a we'll face devastation there won't be food that is an external emotion right as an internal emotion you felt okay so the bees are not there i'm kind of sad you know it's just the last bee but as an external emotion you are trying to find out what will happen what will happen if the bees are not there right so this is what poetry does to you and this is what i had a read a poem that you know it's really oh. calm it's about a night poem and it's really calming like ah. silence and gold lights it like it's really uh, lovely you can uh, put the poem that you've read on the chat box if you have any interesting uh, things to share about poetry please do put on the chat box okay or in our discussion uh, thing okay so poetry gives me so much freedom as a writer i like to say a lot in a little that's what you all said you can say so much in a few words right somebody put it up on the chat box in the beginning so little is enough to say a lot in the poem right okay now uh, all of you have your pen and paper ready okay you can keep your crayons also if you want to just color it and make your poems beautiful so we are going to write a three in one poem okay you can call this a five senses poem can you tell me what the five senses are i've already put it <laughs> i've already put it i'm such i'm such a fool okay so what are the five senses uh seeing yeah right hearing feeling Correct. tasting yeah. and smelling smelling wonderful so we know we are aware of our five senses and we use it all the time right now what you have to do is just take a 2 minute walk around your house look outside the window you can take your book and pen with you and you can write a list poem okay this poem is also called a list poem a countdown poem or a five senses poem so what do you what will you write so your first line will be i see i see below i see you can write what you saw five things you saw like a list i can give you what i i'll just put it in the chat box as an example so i see so i see a water bottle a light a picture a curtain so this is how my poem will read uh, there has been a break in the poem i see 
a water bottle. I am seeing what is in front of me. Okay, you can take a walk around your home, and uh, you or best thing is you can look outside the window if you're sitting near the window. See, list five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can feel. I am feeling a little warm. I am feeling a little chirpy, and I'm feeling curious. I'm feeling curious because I don't know whether you are liking it or not. <laughs> yeah. So I feel. So three things that I feel. I smell. So I haven't cooked anything yet, but I still get the smell of soap uh, because my son just left the bathroom door open. So smell of soap. Then. Uh, if something is cooking in the kitchen then i'll get the smell of chapati or rice or something like that so are we ready to go every poem that you write whether it is edited or not edited please re leave your names it's very important okay that's your poem yeah so that's the, it could be somebody's first poem it could be somebody's 20th poem own your piece okay it's like some kind of an art that you're pursuing so so years later when you look at your poems that you wrote as a child you'll be surprised how much you thought and how much uh, uh, how different you were or there was a lot of innocence fact into your writing okay yeah if you think you want to avoid using a uh, by mistake, if the uh, articles come, connecting words and but come, doesn't matter. Uh, but you can st uh, you can still write it. Otherwise, just stick to the words. We are not following any rules here. We are trying to be as you know unconventional as possible with our poems. I hear people talking, Siddhant, what about I see? Did you see something? Crickets, yeah, fan, ah, yes, and people above me, correct. All right, Siddhant, okay. Anyone else who's finished a full poem, a full list poem? It's up, oh, okay, ah, <laughs> yes. Satish is in the room, but you could, uh, Satish, you could also see curtains, perhaps fan, desk, or you're just focused on the screen, so you're just seeing us. <laughs> right, interesting, interesting observation. So each one of our poems also will be different, uh, depending upon what we are observing, uh, what we are hearing, what we are feeling, what we are smelling, and what we taste. So, what do you think you tasted? Okay, Siddhan says, I feel comfortable, tired, scratchy. Okay, what is scratching you? <laughs> Mosquitoes. Right. I smell. What do you smell? Is mom cooking something? You may be getting smells of soap. I see lots of homework. Oh, dear. <laughs> Okay. If your nose is blocked, then you know you may uh, you may get a different smell altogether. Huh? If your nose is blocked, so try and observe your smell. This is all uh, you know stimulating our senses. Huh? Uh, this poem is an exercise to just make ourselves aware of the senses, even when we are writing poetry, and that is what poetry does to us. No, it plays with our senses. Right, all these three poems that we did, it played with our senses. And that is why I got you to do this poem of uh, nature. I smell oxygen and dust. How do you know the smell of oxygen, Siddhan? Huh? <laughs> right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so poems can also make you laugh. Poems can be uh, a good way to, you know, uh, bring in humor also not just serious stuff for, you know, uh, very, uh, what do I say, uh, very beautiful stuff. Okay, saliva, right, you're tasting saliva because you haven't had anything in a while. Okay, I taste saliva. So saliva also has a taste, right. 
yeah so you must be getting that after taste of chocolate so you can put it you can be candid uh, right i see a chair a bed a door a book a bottle wonderful i hear rain vehicles okay who's talking and thunder right right i hear cricket sound of my brother sound of my brother or you can say brother talking sound of fan sound of zoom sound from zoom yes i am talking no continuously but 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 i am talking so yes you will hear my voice also i feel comfortable sleepy and confused are ah, perfect for the rainy weather rishikesh i am so glad you said yeah because you know usually we never agree and we never want to tell the other that you know i am feeling sleepy and confused what are you feeling confused about you can say you can you can uh, you know express that also all right so put them all in one uh, in one page uh, so it should read like a poem so i see five things da 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 five things i hear da 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 four things i feel three things i smell i taste so it goes like a countdown poem 5 4 3 2 1 and it is also called the five senses poem it is also called a list poem because you are listing everything like how you make a grocery list you are listing everything so you you've actually done or you've actually written a three uh, in one kind of a poem yeah very interesting yes i smell a book how nice i smell a book in my hand who is this rishikesh wonderful rishikesh i like the smell of books too right i taste idli with ulli chamandi wonderful <laughs> now you're making us all hungry dinner time now we'll this uh, we will explore a different kind of a poem called sinquen uh, easy peasy if you know your uh, grammar yeah if you know your parts of speech we know parts of speech right anybody who doesn't know what a part of speech is okay so parts of speech is nothing but noun verb adjective uh, adverb pronouns there are eight parts of speech so we are just going to use these parts of speech to write our poem so uh, what does a sinquen have this is called a sinquen poem so we are going to toy around with a little bit of parts of speech here so the line one also will be your title okay so line one i have already given you a prompt you can select any prompt any one of these prompt like coconut wind if you want to write about the wind your title will be wind so that will be line 1 wind okay then you are writing about the wind so write two adjectives about the wind two adjectives adjectives in a malayalam thil what do we say visheshan uh, no visheshan is in hindi no uh, what do you say in malayalam i am stuck for that word okay adjectives adjective is something that describes so how will you describe a wind got it you will describe so in line 2 you will use two adjectives to describe the wind line 3 you will use ing words or a verb so how many words you will use three verbs to describe the wind or the coconut or a friend or a rainbow so choose any one of these prompts you can write on all four prompts or any one prompt that's up to you so i've given you a choice of four prompts so if you're writing about the coconut that will be coconut in line 1 line 2 you will describe about the coconut hard and uh, maybe strong so there are two adjectives then in words grating scraping you know what are the action words that come with the coconut grating scraping throwing or breaking all that you can do they will be the verbs then a uh, phrase what do you think the coconut is feeling a phrase that shows a feeling yeah so that one and in line 5 you will have to write another word for coconut 
So first line, you have the noun coconut. In line five, you will have to write a synonym for coconut. So for coconut, I will write a huge nut or a big nut. I won't use big. I will say nut. Okay. Coconut is nothing but a nut or a fruit, something like that. You get my point? So this is a poem that I've shared here, a po the poem below. Can anybody read the poem I've shared as an example? It's a child in my reading club who wrote this. So he wanted to use his own prompt. So the noun that he used was Pennywise. Anyone knows what Pennywise is? Have you seen the movie? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma what is it, Atmika? A joker from the movie It. Ah, in the movie It. So this boy is very, uh, you know, he's very fascinated with that Pennywise. So he wanted to write a poem, Cinquin. So he wrote Pennywise, scary and creepy for the two adjectives, killing, eating, hiding for the verbs, creepy and the feeling is creepy and sneaking. I don't know what he meant, but yes. And another word for Pennywise he used is it. Got it? Another word. So find another word for wind in the last line. Find another word for friend in the last line. Find another word for rainbow in the last line. So do you want to try it now quickly? Is it, are you all comfortable? Are you all okay? I'd like to see your poems. Huh? All right. See, children, another thing that I want to tell you is don't feel shy of sharing. Nobody is going to judge you. Don't, nobody is going to say, ah, oh, there's a spelling mistake. There's this. We are just going to explore and enjoy what each one of us have written because each one of us have a different way of thinking. So we celebrate that kind of thinking. Okay. So nobody is going to judge you or say anything. Ah, oh, this is wrong. That is wrong. No, we are not doing that. We are not judging our work. We are purely enjoying and exploring poetry in a different uh, sense of the word altogether. Okay, we are not following any convention. So please feel free to share your work and please write your names. So see this, this child has written his name and he's so proud of it. He's written so many sequence like this. You know, I have around uh, almost 100 poems written by my reading club children. And I wish to publish them as unedited version of children's poems. It's so wonderful. I have not edited. I have not corrected their spellings. I have not in, interfered in their grammar. It's just what the children have written. Okay. So as you refine and as you keep writing, you can refine your writing. So this is the first step towards your writing. So please feel free to uh, share your work. Okay. All right, you can go ahead if anybody feels like sharing a couple of them. I would like it. Oh, Mega, I didn't read yours. I feel so sorry. I am so sorry. Who's this, Mega? Okay, An Evening at Home is the title of a poem. I see a glowing ball of fire in the sky. What was that, uh, Mega? Did you really see something out? I was trying to describe it rather than telling okay right you just have to write what you're seeing okay so we are not using any describing words nothing we're just listing okay, okay. so this is good uh, because uh, it looks like as if you're a seasoned writer okay a sky full of stars okay uh, no uh, the whole idea of giving you this exercise was what you see immediately okay for me it is a sky full of clouds uh, and I think we all are in the same city, at least you and I, right? A sky full of stars, firecrackers bursting, a superhero comic, homework overflowing on my desk. Oh my God, I can imagine. I hear crickets chirping, sound of loud rock music, sound of TV show, the fans spinning. I feel comfy, I feel curious, a bit sleepy, wonderful. I smell perfume and I smell petrichor of the rain, wonderful. I can taste chocolate. Okay, that was the last thing she ate. So she tastes chocolate. Right. Okay, there's one more. Who wants to read? Uh, Mariam, can you read what you have written? It would be nice to listen to the poem. I herself. see. I see the bright night sky, blinking lights, the tall buildings, the train, and the crowded highway. Wonderful. I hear the silence of the night, 
the crickets, the siren of the ambulance speeding, and cooking in the kitchen. It's still Wonderful. cooking. Yeah, right. <laughs> I feel creaky, tired, and very hot. Very? I smell hot. Hot. Oh, yes. Even I haven't put the yeah. I smell the cooked beans and the leftover coffee. Uh, and I taste the pureness of the water. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Mega and all of you, whoever has shared, have shared wonderfully. So please keep writing and use these as cues. You can write many more uh, of these list poems yourself because each time you go to a different place, you're seeing different things. You will hear different things. You will smell different things. Yeah. So each space will give you a different feel altogether and you can come up with a lot of five senses poem or a countdown poem. Okay. Anybody up to sharing a sinquin? Okay. Yeah. Just go through the sinquin, the format of the sinquin. And Sinquin was developed by this person called Adelaide Crapsy. You can Google up for this and you will get a whole lot of Sinquins. And Sinquin, I'm giving you an easier form. And Sinquin is just like haiku. You have to use syllables. Uh, like what uh, Ishan was saying, haiku has syllables. Same way, even Sinquin, you can use syllables. Okay, so once you get the hang of different kinds of poems, you can try your hand at using syllables and using a sinker. Okay. Ah, uh, another interesting thing I want you to do is try the same thing with another language. Say, for example, Malayalam or Hindi or French, if you can use the same kind of formats, even in uh, other languages. Maybe a sinquin is possible in Malayalam or Hindi or any language of your choice uh, that you're learning. Try it. It would be interesting to see. Yeah, that's how you toy around with something new that you learn. What if? And that is where your critical thinking comes in. You know, can we use the sinquin anywhere else? Yeah. Is it only restricted to English? Can it be done in any other language? Try that. Who's there? Not yet. Ah, yeah. Okay, Manomi. No problem. Please share in the thread. Yeah, I know one hour is not may not be enough to think and write and all. You need your time. So we have a week's time. So if you are able to put in your poems, we'll have around uh, how many of us are here? Nine or ten of us. We'll have ten different poems to read and appreciate. Okay. So we can take this also as an appreciation session where we appreciate one form of poetry and we also appreciate each other's work, okay? So poetry appreciation is another important thing. You know, when we write poetry or stories, we appreciate one another's work or each other's work. So that's how we also, then we start analyzing, we start thinking critically. What was the poet thinking? Why did he write? Or why did the poet write like this? Why is she writing like this? Okay. Friends, uh, Mariam, uh, you'll have to write one below the other in a line, okay? Line one, line two, line three. Uh, no problem. I know in this chat, it can, kind of becomes can. cumbersome. Yeah, yeah. So when you're writing in your book, write one below the other. Okay. Friends, uh, so that is line one, which is a noun. Loyal and fun, two adjectives, wonderful. Three, uh, three ing words or verbs, playing, shouting, helping. Nice. Then uh, feeling uh, a phrase, happy and content. Then friend, very good. You got a synonym for friend, companion. Wonderful. Um, right. There are a lot of words. There are a lot of words. So if you have your dictionary with you, you'll find a lot of, whole lot of words. Wonderful, all of you. I, I, I think uh, some wonderful words came out. Uh, from a few of you today and I'm hoping that others also will share in the thread. So, did you think that uh, poetry would be difficult to write? Did anyone of you think that oh how am I going to write poem today or was it okay? Is it easy? Is it okay to yes. write? Yes. I never knew that it could be written like this. Yeah, see, that's what. When we read a famous person's poem, we're like, oh, how is he able to think? Or how is she able to think so well? 
but you know if we use these simple prompts even we can uh, you know put words and then maybe later on we can enhance and edit and make the language also a yes okay another poem we got rainbow multicolored uh, and shimmering uh, so shimmering is a verb uh, megha can you give another adjective for rainbow i'm sorry i was just still typing so uh, okay okay no problem forward. shimmering amazing fascinating uh, beautiful uh, you have to give a, a feeling to it a phrase with a feeling spectrum right another word for rainbow see look at how the vocabulary also comes no another word for rainbow is spectrum when i got this uh, younger children to write first standard second grade children to write they wrote another word for rainbow was colors right so you are you are like i think in the high school so you know it's spectrum <laughs> wonderful see look at how vocabulary also changes right okay shall we move to the next one okay do you want to explore more so uh, this is called diamond diamante which is in the form of a diamond so you have to write the words in such a way that it forms a diamond shape all right so i'll send this to you you can explore it i'll just run you through what you have to do it's similar to a sequin but if you notice the first line the fourth line and the seventh line are all nouns in a diamond and i've also given an example of a diamond poem written by karen and michel uh, they run a, a learning home school learning space called layers of learning they have a very interesting website so you can just go through it and uh, this is what it is so a noun you will find noun in the first line there are four nouns in the fourth line and one noun in the last line okay in the second line there are two adjectives it repeats in the sixth line as well then third and fifth line have verbs they have they have three verbs each two adjectives in second line and the main line has four nouns so if you look at this uh, poem spring is the noun lovely bright two adjectives living breathing flowering see the verbs with ing now again nouns these are different blooms or different flowers crocus blooms tulips raindrops and the sun is also there right in spring then again repeat of verbs breathing warming blooming again two adjectives vibrant colorful and another word for spring is season all right so for you to explore diamond i am giving you three words web volcano or door any on any of them you can write you can either write on a web it can be world wide web or the spiders web that's your choice you can write about a volcano you can write about the door okay and if you also notice you can also write science poems in fact the five senses poem was more like a uh, your uh, you know a science poem yeah so you can try you can bring in elements of science you can bring in elements of maths you can learn your math concepts through poems like this there are very interesting websites and books that i can share with you about maths poems tasty poems science poems tasty poems is all about food right yeah so this you can try at home right oh this is another very we can do this it's a very very uh, i think all of us as children want uh, have a magic box so this magic box is written by kit right who wants to read the first stanza of the uh of the magic box can i read it yeah please mega i will put it in the box the swish of a silk sari on a summer night fire from the nostrils of a chinese dragon the tip of a tongue touching a tooth okay who wants to read the next stanza manomi do you want to read the next stanza yes ma'am 
I will put in the pause. A snowman with a rubbing belly, a sip of the bluish water from lake, to sun, a leaping spark from an electric fish. Okay. Who wants to read the third stanza? Rishikesh Siddhant, can you read? One of you, can you read? What about Atmika? Can you read? I will read. Yeah, uh, I will put it into the box. Three violet fishes spoken in Gujarati. The last joke of an ancient uncle. And the first smile of a baby. Very good. Okay. Uh, Siddhant, Clemmy, do you want yes. to read? Siddhant, yes, please go ahead. I'll put into the box a fifth season and a black sun. A cowboy on a broomstick and a witch on a white horse. Okay. Clemmy, do you want to go with the next one? Yes, ma'am. Yes. My box is fashioned from ice, gold, and steel with stars on lid and secrets on the corners. Its hinges and toes joints of dinosaurs. Yeah, its hinges are the toe joints of dinosaurs. Look at what all bizarre things, no strange things the poet wants to put in the magic box. Okay, all right. Who wants to read the last stanza? Navjeet, do you want to read the last stanza? I shall surf okay. in my box. Yes, please do. I shall surf in my box on the great high roaring breakers of wild Atlantic. Then wash ashore on a yellow beach, the color of the sun. Yeah, so now you think of what you want to put in your magic box. Okay, so... What kind of a poem is the magic box? Did you see rhyming words? Did you see rhyming words anywhere? In the poem, just observe the poem. Did you see rhyming words anywhere? No. No? Okay. So this kind of a poem is called free verse. Okay? Free verse. It doesn't follow any rhyming pattern. And all this while, we were kind of doing free verse only. All the poems that you wrote so far was kind of free verse. But there is a lot of imagination, no? In that my magic box, lot of imagination. Dinosaurs' toes as hinges. See that? Its hinges are the toe joints of dinosaurs. And the poet wants to put a fifth season. We only read about four seasons. Isn't it? The poet wants to put a fifth season in the magic box. Okay. And a cowboy on a broomstick. Why not witch on a broomstick? See, usually we, uh, we associate witch on the broomstick and cowboy on a white horse. But look at this. So it can be as strange as possible. So you can think of what you want to put uh, in the magic box. So did you notice there is a lot of imaginative thing in the magic box? There were also sounds. If you observe, there were some kind of sounds also. See, the baby uh, somewhere, somewhere about the baby it was written and the, the tip of the tongue, the fire from the nostrils of a dragon, all that is there, yeah? No and no rhyme, yes? That's why free verse has no rhyme, no rhyming scheme at all. Textures, you felt something, yeah? You're putting a, a dinosaur something, you're putting a sari, you're putting so many things. And you're also able to visualize sights. So when you're writing your magic box poem, uh, okay, uh, I'll just correct it and send it to you. Uh, you can... Write anything that can go into that. You don't have to follow any rules. Your homework can go into it. A genie can go into it who will write your, complete your homework or a magic. Somebody can go into it to do all your work. Okay. So it can be anything. Right. So this was some of the magic box poem written by some of my children. So one child wants a pack of crayons to color all day. Uh, in the magic box, all these things will go. My favorite cookies too, storybooks, carom board. I will put in the magic box, watercolors, biryani, lazy bees, blackboards. You know, it, they went wild. And I will put in the magic box, color papers and a study table too. So this is another child. 
yeah this this is a very interesting one i will put in the magic box an egg that has put for hundreds of years ha huh? you can put anything in the magic box because it's a magic box a book and a book pencil and eraser that comes alive why does it why does he want them to come alive and write my exam and homework he wants the uh, you know the pencil erasers to come alive because he somebody has to write his exam and homework my bird that uh, doesn't eat food he wants a pet bird that doesn't eat food a planet that eats stars so it's a magic box anything can go so his imagination run ran wild so are with all of these children okay <clears throat> so this is another kind of poem that we did <coughs> i think siddhant's work is here we did found art so if you look at uh, one corner of each of these poetry children found materials from their homes okay uh, in their kitchen there is a banana uh, you know banana thing that and is that's there. mine yeah that's yours uh, so he wrote about it 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 became a crown of some princess okay and he's written uh, maybe when i send it you can read then there is another child who who has put a mango and some other lemon and made it look like a goat and it is and she's written about the goat <coughs> and this child has made all the paper dolls no chocolate wrapper paper dolls and she's written uh, dancing dolls they are four they are dancing because they are bored okay so first they made the art so there's this child who brought in a, a stale uh, or a overripe banana and uh, she's written relaxing it's a wonderful day uh, with uh, with many things to say the yellow boat sailing on the sea so the banana became a yellow boat sailing on the sea and the sun shining uh what is that and the sun shining in the sea so this flower she put it as a sun so they just composed this at that instant and they wrote about it so they could find any random things from their kitchen from their desktops anything and they could come up with an art and they could write about it so this child has made buildings and she's written about buildings uh, and the sharpeners are the doors and all the math sticks i think have become tall buildings and yeah so many interesting things that they've done with found art so they made their art just then and they wrote poetry so this is the, you can try these things the reason i'm showing you so uh, three home assignments you have to do uh, cinquen and diamond and another one very interesting i think since we are all that you know net savvy and all that this is something that i found again by brian bilston uh he's a i don't know he's a genius sometimes as a poet i just love because he he makes you think you know that critical thinking and all that Sorry? he makes you think through the poet yes maria um what did you mean by diamond diamond the the shape poetry you know one sec i'll just show you this one so you have to write it yeah you have to arrange the words in such a way that it looks like a diamond that's all see how the this part can you see that's it uh, when you write it it becomes like it looks like a diamond okay so uh, this uh, yeah i was talking about brian bilston so what he did you know we have this google search isn't it so the prompt is is school okay when you uh, go to your google search so when i say is school can you see my google yeah so when i say is school look at the auto complete searches that i am getting is school life is school life the best is school 2017 happy ending so what this brian wilston did you know he constructed poems out of these searches so every line had is school 
life best is school 2000 so it went on for four lines like that so that became the first stanza okay then the next prompt in the poem that i'm going to give you in the same poem is so first he searched for is school so he got four auto search completed thing and he wrote as wrote them as one stanza next you search for school is you will get a completed auto search without you completing the sentence what you're looking for school is you will get some more suggestions school is so you will get so many suggestions so you can write uh, the four lines that you get school is it becomes the next stanza then if you search for can school you will get so many other suggestions so it becomes different stanza and brian bilston used it used it for love love is is love can love so you know so and it became a brilliant poem in itself when you read it it's like a poem in itself the foot train and it is written by julia donaldson and i'm going to perform it with my voice <clears throat> the foot train coffee 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 bread and butter bread and butter bread and butter bread and butter biscuits and cheese biscuits and cheese biscuits and cheese biscuits and cheese fish and chips 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 ku fish and chips fish and chips fish and chips fish and chips su yeah see you just performed the poem with your voice and it's a tiny poem called the food train by julia donaldson and if you're just reading it uh, this is a book poems to perform uh, you can try this book uh, just like how in malayalam no in malayalam we have an opportunity to perform our poet poems you know padyam uh, cholle is there in malayalam but we don't do enough in english or perhaps even in other languages but you can just try this a fun way of reading a poem aloud does it make a difference when you read a poem aloud this way uh, did you find a difference was it dull boring or did you add rhythm to it did you add a, a you know some kind of a music to it if you noticed i i read it the way uh, the train moves I'm sorry okay. for the um auto complete poem. Mm -hmm. Do you just have the first two words of what we said? That's it. School is school. Uh, is school. That's it. So mm -hmm. Google will complete the search for you. <laughs> okay. Then school can. It will auto select four best choices and put it as a stanza. Okay. <coughs> okay. Last one. I'll just perform this. Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. the dark wood this is also a small poem and you can find it on the net as well this we use it uh, for our theater practices and all that just to get our sounds okay uh, and how the tone changes as the mood of the lines change okay the dark wood in the dark dark wood there was a dark dark house and in that dark dark house there was a a dark dark room and in that dark the the dark room room there was a dark dark cupboard and in that dark dark cupboard there's a dark 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 shelf and on that dark dark shelf there was a dark dark box and in that dark 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 
pop up of a box. There was a, there was a spider. Or there was a ghost, you know. So in this book, it says the ghost. So when I do it with small children, they're all scared, you know, because it is unexpected, but they were expecting that it is ghost. But you can change the ending. It can be a spider, it can be a lizard, anything that you're scared of, or it can just laugh it off. So if you want to give it a little bit of humor, you can just use another word, you know. So the climax builds because I wanted the fear factor to come. So did you observe how the fear factor is building up? Yeah. So when you look at your face and when you look at your audience face, you know that, you know, something unexpected is going to happen.